Father, we have called so many names. And we could have spent the remainder of this hour, in fact, hours, calling folks names who have lost loved ones or who have been not only infected by COVID, but there are other things in life that are still going on. We pray, oh Lord God, for, for families that are in the Fort Worth and Texas area and all over the United States. And we pray, oh Lord, for any of the families that have joined us, whatever continent that they may be uh, from, out of the country, or nation, Lord God, we pray for the entire world that we will seek, seek Christ and that we will worship, oh Lord God, in the midst of our circumstances. Gracious Father, I pray that you will use me and that you will use us together in this time of sharing your word. We thank you for this day and we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We give praise. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. We're calling our attention this morning to uh, the book of Psalms 29 and we'll be looking at the first several verses. We are in the season of epiphany. I thought I'd be preaching a message on Christmas is not over. It's one reason why you still see the decorations that are in the sanctuary, which we thank God for all of those responsible for decorating. We do want to share with you this Thursday if you're in the area and would like to drop by the altar in the sanctuary from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You must wear a mask and have your temp checked. Please con contact Sister Reed in the office. And then lastly, don't forget, we have our pastor's conference, which will be virtual if you are a minister, not only CMB, but if you are a minister and would like to join our conference, please go to cmbchurch.org to register, and the conference will start tomorrow and also Tuesday. If you look with me for our hearing this morning in the Word, we find the following, the 29th book of Psalms, verses 1 through 8. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord. Thank you, Brother Tate. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Listen, church. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord, yes it is, is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. My brothers and sisters, for a thought this hour, we would like to use worship in times of storms. Since it's snowing outside, I could have said worship in a time of snowing. Amen. But worship during the time of storms. You know, many of us were looking to shift from the horrors of 2020 in hopes that 2021 would be better. Is that right? But it's already clear, brothers and sisters, this is why you got to be careful in what you put your hope in, that 2021 has started right where 2020 has left off. In fact, somebody might even argue that 2021 has started off worse than the way 2020 entered. 2020 introduced COVID-19, while 2021 not only has COVID-19, but now we have what they call the variant another type of strand that is more contagious strand than the first. We're not only dealing with the hypocrisy of the Trump administration in 2020, but at the beginning of 2021, 
We have domestic terrorists attacking Congress on Capitol Hill. These events remind us, brothers and sisters, that Jesus said, yes he did, you need to watch as well as what? Pray. But Jesus also said that the devil will sift you as wheat. See, we're never surprised if you're a believer and you've been with the Lord for some time. We ought not ever be surprised when evil and violence and corruption shows up. We're never numb and blinded or absent-minded and clueless and ambivalent and uh, struck by surprise when, when the storm starts showing up. Ironically, we're using this word storm the storms of life should not be taken lightly. Some of you may recall in the past few days that an Air Force veteran, a woman, I won't call her name, that was killed in this attack on the Capitol had tweeted, nothing will stop us, and I'm quoting her, they can try and try and try, but the storm is here, and it is descending upon D.C. in less than 24 hours. This is an Air Force veteran, and of course, it's sad, no doubt, that she was killed in this situation. But when she uses the word storm, and I won't go into all the details, the word storm is not generic or general, but it's specifically applying to President Trump's administration and, and a whole lot of groups that believe that the storm is to be this attack against uh, our government and the things that they don't agree with. The storm is not talking about heavy rains and strong winds. It's not talking about tornadoes and hurricanes. But people in circumstances and deadly biases and viruses that overrun and overtake and that began to over-occupy. My brothers and sisters, whatever kind of storms you're dealing with in life, we strongly suggest that God should not be left out of your storm. That whatever you are dealing with, God should never be erased and forgotten or precluded from your equation. That our worship to God is still important. That our allegiance and our loyalty and commitment and faith and service, even in the middle of a storm, it must remain intact. Amid the pandemic, we must still worship. Amid the death toll, we must still worship. Amid an administration that has become wicked, we must still worship. In the midst of violence, we must still worship. In the midst of people being abusive and intrusive and elusive, we must still worship. Talking about worship in a time of storms. Now we go back to the book of Psalms and Look at the 29th book, verse 1. The psalmist tells us, Give unto the Lord. O ye mighty, give unto the Lord. Give glory and strength. This book of Psalms has a dual focus in that the first two verses are within the context of God's people assembling together under the leadership of King David as a worship leader. Verses 3 through 10 focus upon the presence of God manifested through life, storms, nature, and the elements, the assembling of the people. And the presence of God, a tribute to the context of building a physical temple. You might remember that David had the desire to build a physical structure for God. But God did not allow it because David had blood on his hand. His son Solomon would build this temple of worship. And we read throughout Chronicles where even so David did not take his ball and go home. David was not upset because God decided to do it another way. David had to check himself but then found himself supporting the efforts of the building of the temple. So in response to this grand achievement, David and the people are taking time to see how they can give 
back to God. While many people make excuses to not recognize and acknowledge and give to God, there are far more reasons to give than not to give at all. There are people that believe right now because people are not gathering in person inside of the church that they should not give. And this is really the wrong spirit and the wrong attitude. Every person can make up a reason to not give. Yet when it's time to give to the Lord, we find that Israel did so with what? Willing hearts. First Chronicles 16 and 29 tells us, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. My wife and I the other week enjoyed a movie that many of you may have seen. It's entitled Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. In fact, if you haven't seen it, it's a great film. Levy played by Chadwick Boseman raises in his rants the theological question. Where is God when all these bad things are happening, not just to any people, but to black people? And he was making an argument. Why acknowledge and recognize and give to God when my mama was raped when I was a little boy? Where is God when my daddy was murdered? Where is God when... Things happen undeservingly to black women and children of people of color. Where is your God, he would say, right now? It was an excellent scene, and I recommend again the movie. But I would say to Levy, I, I can't blame God when a president incites a riot. I can't blame God when we encourage and support the foolishness of people, people attacking innocent people. I can't blame God for humanity's crimes and injustices and violences. I can't blame God when people decide to make a conscious decision to do things that they ought not be doing. I can't blame God for when we made up in our minds that we want to live in sin and we want to live the way we choose to live and leave God out of the equation. And then when things go wrong, now we want to call on God. Now we want to ask, where is God? When God did not matter in the beginning to some of us at all. We think about the act of giving back to God. Often, our thoughts when we give are in the frame of mind of what is tangible, something that is physical. But giving, my brothers and sisters, also takes the form of intangibles. It's good to be able to give something that, that can be held or looked at and touched, something that can be played with, that has parts that can be pressed and that can be moved. But another way of giving is tangible ways of giving. The types of gifts that cannot be handled physically. The sum is said to give the Lord glory and strength. Give God glory and give God strength. To give God glory. We're not talking about a can of glory greens and a can of glory peas and a can of glory cabbage. Glory is, is about acknowledging and, and honoring and recognizing who God, not just what God does, but who God is. To give glory is about both what we, what we say and what we do. That reflects that God is not only inside of us, but God is, is over us. Secondly, we give the Lord strength. But what does God need? With our strength. The commentary of Matthew Henry stated that whatever glory or strength he has by his providence entrusted you with, we turn around and offer it to him. It's to be used for his honor and his service. In other words, the strength that God gives us in turn is to be given back to God in terms of how we live and how we serve and how we 
work and labor in this life. There's a scripture that I love to quote from Psalms 121, verse 1. Because I understand that I have no strength of my own. I have no help of my own. I have no ability of my own. And every now and again, I have to say that I will lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Some scriptures say from which cometh my strength. My help, my strength coming from the Lord who made heavens and the earth. I don't claim no strength of my own. I don't claim any ability of my own. I claim no talent or gift of my own. The strength we have, you can put in a label you want on it. You can call it a gift. You can call it an expertise. You can call it a talent. You can call it a degree. You can call it training. Whatever strength you have, it comes from the Lord. We don't use our strength to march on the Capitol to attack legislators. We don't use our strength to advocate violence and evil. We don't use our strength to be abusive like President Trump, who has been that way from day one. We don't use our strength like legislators that advocate that the election was fraudulent. We don't use our strength to tear people down and to work on folk. We don't use our strength to gossip and to cheat and to lie. But we use our strength to glorify the Lord. We don't use our strength to abuse and confuse. We don't use our strength to rape and to beat and to slander, to gossip and to rob and to cheat and to fornicate. We don't use our strength to mess over folk, to mess around with folk. We use our strength to glorify the Lord. We use our strength to honor the Lord. We use our strength to worship him in the beauty of holiness. Now verse two tells us, give unto the Lord the glory, yes he did, do unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The psalmist said that what we give is due unto his name. Anytime something is due, it implies, my brothers and sisters, indebtedness. The Bible in basic English tells us full glory. When something is due, do is about taking the time because you believe that you owe it. You believe you owe it to glorify the Lord. Paul wrote to the church of Roman in the 13th chapter, verse 7. He said, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear is due, Honor to whom honor is due. You know, we make time to ensure that everything else has its due. But what about the glory due unto the name of the Lord? See, to those of us that know what it is to pay bills. Don't you have some bills to pay? Don't you have some folk, some creditors that you owe? You, you know something about what it means when it says something is due. When I look at our bills and I look at the car note, I read it and it tells me something not only about due, but it talks about the amount due, and it also tells us the date that is due. Sometimes we fall behind on the due date and the due amount. Sometimes we, we get too far behind on what's due and you can fall in the default. Some people get so far behind that that they end up with all kind of penalties. And see, you wanted to ignore the due date. See, God has a due too. We end up with all kinds of penalties and all kind of fees and charges because we failed or because we didn't have enough or you forgot to pay it. But not only do we have uh, something due to the bill payers and, and the bill collectors, not only are you due for the house note and the car note. Not only are you due for the MasterCard and the credit card and the Visa card, 
Not only all you do for the light bill and the gas bill and the phone bill and, and the cell phone bill, but there are times when, when we do to God. There are times we fail to pay God God's due and pay God his glory and pay God his honor and pay God his praise. You took time to pay your dues by watching the football game. You took your time by paying your dues to the fraternity and the sorority. You took your time to pay your dues to the club and to the association. You took your time to pay your dues by shopping online and some of you went in person. You took your time to pay your dues on traveling, whether you went a few miles or out of state. But you and sometimes we fail to give God his due. You fail to give God his glory. You fail to give God his honor. You fail to give God his praise. And God is looking for us in the middle of storms. God is looking for us in the middle of trials. God is looking for us in the middle of trouble. God is looking for us in the middle of chaotic times to still give him praise and to give him glory and to give him honor. But the question, brothers and sisters, that must be raised is what is it that is due to the Lord? See, David said, worship is what God is interested in. And worship is our payment to God. Say it one more time. Worship is what God is interested in. Worship is our way of payment to God. So even in times when going to church has been stifled and restricted, However, going to church should not be confused or understood as that you should not worship even in your home. See, some people can't wait to get back to the church house. But then there are some people who don't care if the church will open up. Can I tell the truth for you one more time? Some people don't care if the church will open up at all. We have people talking about how they will not worship God. But there may everything, time for everything else. Can't remember the author. But he said it's never a question in whether you will worship, but only what you will worship. Because it's in humans' DNA that we are going to worship. We are going to worship somebody. We're going to worship something. And we are going to worship some God. You know, we worship everything and anything and some things that have nothing to do with God at all. When God said in Exodus 20 and 3, that thou shalt have no other gods before me. It is a crime shame that many folks have become worshipers of Donald Trump. It's a crime shame that many people have become worshipers. You remember David Koresh? It's a crime shame that many people became worshipers of Jim Jones. It's a crime shame that many people became worshipers of Adolf Hitler. You know, some people worship everything. And some people worship anything. And some people worship some things that have no thing to do with God. Some of you worship your television. Your television has become a God. For some of us, your computer has become a God. For some of us, the house you live in has become a God. For some of you, your car you drive has become a God. For some of you, your career has become your God. And for some of you, money has become your God. For some of us, young people, TikTok has become your God. Video games have become your God. And whatever it is that you have allowed to control yourself, the thing tells you what to do. It tells you when to click here. It tells you when to download an app. It tells you when to purchase this. It tells you when to open that. 
And you hop like a robot, like you can't wait to do whatever it is that is told you to do whatever it is. And it pushes your button, and you push its button. And now you have become the remote control that's being used by some exterior force telling you how to live and telling you how to do and telling you how to think. But when it comes time to truly worship God, it is a problem. If you don't believe me, ask some people in your house about praying. Ask some people that you know about praying. Ask some friends and some family about praying. If you don't believe me, tell some people about what does say at the word. And if you really want to make some people upset, if you really want to make some grown people upset, if you really want to make some children upset, tell them to turn the television off. Tell them to turn the video games off. Tell them to put down the cell phones. Tell them to come out of a chat room. If you really want to get on some folk nerves, tell them about the goodness of the Lord. Tell them about the grace of God. Tell them about the mercy of the Lord. Because the truth be told, some of us are glad that the church is closed. Some of us are glad that you don't have to look at the preacher's face. Some of you are glad that you don't have to sit by certain folk. Some of you are glad that somebody's not sitting in your seat. Some of you are glad that your parking spot is not taken because the Lord is looking for some true worshipers. The Lord is looking for some true worshipers. The Lord is not looking for viewers. I know you love Facebook. I know you love YouTube. I know you love your online. But the Lord is not looking for viewers. The Lord is looking for some worshipers. The Lord for pew sitters and, and couch warmers and remote control operators. But the Lord is looking for some true worshipers. You might be in your home, but God is looking for some true worshipers. You might be in your apartment. God is looking for some true worshipers. You might be in a townhouse, a no house, a one story house, a two story or triple house, but God some true worshipers. You may be at the kitchen table. You may be lying down in the bed. You may be sitting in the car. But wherever you are, you got to worship the Lord. Not only worship him on live streaming. Not only worship him on YouTube. Not only worship him on Facebook. Not only worship him in a webinar. Not only worship him on Zoom. Not only worship him through a screen. I only worship him on Sunday morning, but every day is a day to worship the Lord. Every day is a day to worship the Lord. You can worship him on Monday. You can, can I call the roll? You can worship him on Tuesday. You can worship him on Wednesday. You can worship him on Thursday. You can worship him on Friday. You can worship him on Saturday. You can worship him in the midst of the storm. You can worship him in the midst of trials. You can worship him when you have a heartache. You can worship him when you have a backache. You can worship him when you have aches all throughout your body. You can worship him in the time of illness. See, every day is a time of worship. You can worship God when you got money. You can worship God when you're broke. You can worship God when you're not feeling well. You can worship God when you are feeling well. You can worship God in season and out of season. Because God, he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Worship God and give him glory. Worship God when loved ones are dying. Worship God when you can't find your way. Worship God when the storms come. Worship God when the sun doesn't come out. Worship God when you get a stimulus check. Worship God when you don't get a stimulus check. Worship God if you get a vaccine. Worship God if you don't have a vaccine. It's time to worship God. They can tear down the capital. 